Hello, it's Rob from Pathway Connectivity Solutions, and today I'm going to give you a brief overview of Passcape, our configuration software for all of our products. So we just launched Passcape here, and uh, as it populates everything in the uh, from the last show, it you can see everybody getting a little green icon coming online, and this is a, a map of my lab, uh, a whole bunch of equipment about three vias and a bunch of NSBs, some vignettes, a Cognito, um, some RDM tools over there. Uh, lots going on here, so you can see all of the different devices uh, and their current state. So this is in the main view. So let's just have a, a look here. Obviously we have a toolbar along the top here. Uh, and if we're in a dark theater, we can change the skin so that uh, everything is uh, not so bright. So I'll just change this back. So we have the toolbar here for things like loading shows and rediscovering everything on the network. So I can do a big rediscover here and I'll go out and pull the network, look for anybody who is ARPing the Pathport protocol and we can see its health and its status. And as I highlight things, we will see properties over in the property box. So there's a, the main device view here, uh, the properties box here, uh, this thing called the transaction editor and this one called the message viewer uh, and this gives you an idea of, of what has gone on at certain dates and times and it's wonderful because you can filter on this and look for just um, information about I typed in here NSB so this is just stuff that happens with the NSB I could get rid of this and say let's just see things about my vias uh, and it filters it straight down so we can just search for when things go online and go back where we see my via 10 came online my via 12 came online my via 5 came online very good get rid of that filter this is the the main ethernet view if we go to the rdm view here we will actually see all of the gateways on the network that have uh, rdm capability turned on and from there you can um, uh, go to single ports and discover devices in the RDM world. I could actually get all the information about this RDM test tool that is on my uh, port A of this gateway. And in here I can actually read all of the sensors too uh, and get ideas about uh, ambient temperature, lamp life, uh, software versions. Uh, I can look under DMX, I can see their personality and select you can change the personality on rdm devices and these are all the supported properties and the manufacturer properties um, so this is the rdm view right now i'm going to go back to the ethernet view in my little lab a lot more going on in that world um, so uh, as i said you can just like in the message viewer you can also filter in the device view here so if i just want to look at my nsbs i'm filtering right now on the text nsb and I have NSB gateways, I have NSB stations that are 45 stations, and I have NSB PoE stations. So I could, uh, I could say, okay, let's just filter on NSB space P, and now I'm going to see just my NSB PoE stations. This vignette PoE station uh, is the one I have in my hand here that's connected to my VIA, and uh, I can do certain things like identify and... Uh, yes, that's the guy I'm talking to. So that is the um, one of the other great tools. It automatically sets this property here called identify device, sets it true, and I can unidentify it. And then it goes back to doing what it's doing in the real world. So the first column is the device by name, and the second column is the type. I can sort in ascending or descending order just by clicking on uh, the title bar and it will sort alphabetically and numerically properly uh, so I could search by IP address and I can see how my DHCP server has allocated 13 21 23 24 26 um, and so on uh, and then there's sub devices so if I grab a via and um, let's just grab this via and open it up now we see all of the ports of the via uh, my VIA 10 is a little bit more interesting, so I'll open this up and see my ports. Uh, and I've labeled this one the front door, which is my PoE camera that monitors the front of my house. 
Um, and with that, I can see its PoE allocation here. It's class two at seven watts. It's actually drawing 2.9 watts right now. Um, and the link status is uh, in speed, 10 megabits, half duplex, 100 megabits, full duplex, uh, gigabit link on my fiber port, which will connect, look at this, the link layer discovery partner is going to a device called Roberts VIA 12. Well, that's great. So now I can see on VIA 10, port 11, I am connected to Roberts VIA 12. And if I go on to this one, the VIA 12's port 14's fiber link layer to partner is the VIA 10. So this is really handy when you actually go through your devices. If you've just got the default names, port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can look at the link layer discovery protocol partner and this is one silver which is uh, one of the devices i have in my test rig here it's a nsb device so then from there i could go and say okay where is that one silver so i could just type one oh there it is one silver and i could identify it and there you can see now i'm really debugging my network with lightning speed here um, with some of these tools so we will get into all of the different aspects and properties uh, of each of the devices, the, um, starting with the VIA switches, uh, going into the Pathport gateways, from there the RDM devices downstream, which may be some of our EDIN interfaces or snap panels, um, or it may also be third-party devices, like anybody's moving lights or LED drivers. Um, and we will look at advanced things like VLAN configuration. Here is my network. It's got two VLANs. VIA 10 uh, is using VLAN 2, uh, but everybody else has allocations on VLAN 1. Uh, quickly, I just want to show you the VLAN patch. So this is all of the different ports on all of my different VIAs. And you can see that port 5 and 6 on the VIA 10 are actually a different VLAN altogether, VLAN 2. Um, we can also monitor the PoE power uh, coming from the VIA. So right now, uh, the active draw on the VIA 10 is 14 watts in total. Uh, and on my VIA 12, there's 14 watts with 86 available because there's a 100 watt external supply. Uh, and this guy here, the front door, is actually going above its allocation. And that's why it's in red. These guys don't have it. And it's really handy. You can just double click uh, on a device and turn off its PoE. Uh, and that can recalibrate a device in the field without you physically having to go and unplug and replug things. Then there is also the patch grid. This is to do with Pathport gateways. These are all of my devices. I can sort just by clicking on them. Uh, I could all the port A's are very easily sorted this way, or I could go by the port name uh, or these port groups. I'll talk about that when we get into the patch map um, and the port directions. So here are all my inputs, here are all my outputs. And then you can just go into any input and say, I would like you to start inputting onto my network at universe number seven. And if I'm happy, I can send those patches out by hitting this button. The other way to visualize things is the patch map. So this is a, a little grid of what my system may look like. So my input ports are here uh, and I could grab, uh, these are all the universes that are currently allocated. I could find another virtual universe coming from some console and I can represent that just by dropping it down in here. And then by pressing the space bar, I can then connect that to some output uh, just by using the connecting lines, connecting from here to there, from there to there. Um, you can also have um, HTTP logic. So let me just zoom in here. So if I took connecting this and that, then I could take the output of that and stick it to this output group. So now it's going to HTTP between universe 11 and universe number two and go to this output group which happens to be my vignette demo box gateway on port a 
Now if I want to drill down any further, I can zoom in, get a bit more information, and by touching one of these guys here, I can get its properties. And there's where I can set single loss uh, hold forever, single loss fade, cross fade time. I can see his DMX status is currently inactive. I can disable the port. You can do anything that you would do is if you selected the device from this list over here and grabbed its properties. Um, and then there's a whole other discussion about vignette and very quickly, this is where you can load snapshots. Uh, you can um, alter snapshots and send them back in. Uh, you can get the properties. Uh, and uh, record a new snapshot from the DMX coming in just by sending off the transaction editor. I can also grab zones and I can go into my demo case and I can load a zone and I can see the zone definition here uh, and I can add to it or I can offer it as minimum levels, as maximum levels, send that back to the uh, vignette station. So this is a very quick overview and like I said we're going to go into all the details uh, with subsequent videos uh, showing you more of the PathGate configuration utility from Pathway Connectivity. So until next time, I'm Rob. Join me again. Thanks.